At six o'clock, there'll be more consumer advice on This Is Your Right. But first, we're joining ITN in London for the latest national and international news, with the time now at a quarter to six. The news at 5.45 with Martin Lewis. Bomb defused as President Reagan flies in for the economic summit. Transport workers' election, official inquiry says there was ballot rigging, but no plot. Buying a slice of the Harrier, British Aerospace hopes for liftoff. And born again, after two months in a bubble, the woman who beat Lassa fever. Good evening. A terrorist bomb has been discovered in Bonn, just minutes after President Reagan arrived for the World Economic Summit. West German police say it was spotted in the nick of time and defused. Security chiefs were already on full alert after communist guerrillas killed two firemen with a car bomb in Brussels. Belgium's justice minister said it confirmed an international terrorist threat throughout Europe. It's an extra headache for the security men protecting Mrs. Thatcher. She arrives in Bonn tomorrow. Even before news of the Brussels bomb, there was evidence of a sizable security operation here in Bonn. But the circumstances in which a bomb was found two miles from where the summit's to be held raised some worrying questions. Residents near the West German Aerospace Industry headquarters where it was found say the police were tipped off, failed to find it at first, and it was only defused minutes after President Reagan arrived. The incident will certainly mean even more attention to security, which has already been meticulous, if not particularly high profile, with this inch-by-inch inch search, for example, of one of the ceremonial areas. So far, all has gone according to plan, though President Reagan was greeted by the unnerving sounds of an artillery salute on his arrival. He himself has already stolen the political limelight by announcing a complete ban on all trade between the United States and Nicaragua, intended to show his anger at the refusal of the American Congress to back his plans for aid to the Contra rebels there, and at the Nicaraguan president's recent visit to and deals with Moscow. These events and the recent Nicaraguan rejection of the president's peace initiative makes clear the urgent threat that Nicaragua's activities represent to the security of the region and therefore to the security and foreign policy of the United States. Mr. Speaks denied that the announcement was intended to divert attention away from the president's visit to Bitburg and its SS war graves. Michael Brunson, ITN, Bonn. President Reagan is tonight facing new controversy over his German trip after it emerged that his host for the six-day visit is one of Hitler's godsons. Baron Jörg Adolf Sigismund von Horschur, owner of Gimnich Castle, confirmed today he was named after the Nazi leader who sent him a silver dish for his christening in 1934. But he never met Hitler and was too young to join the Nazi party. President Reagan stayed at the castle once before during a NATO meeting in 1982. In Poland, Lech Wałęsa was turned back by riot police today when he attempted to join an, an official May Day parade in Gdansk. Hundreds of solidarity supporters tried to storm the parade, but they were forced back by riot police wielding truncheons. There were several arrests. In Warsaw, the Polish leader, General Jaruzelski, joined thousands of banner-waving marchers for the capital's official May Day parade. Thousands of solidarity supporters were kept away from the parade when they were forced down side streets by riot police. And in Moscow, thousands of workers paraded through Red Square carrying banners, balloons and flowers. The Soviet leader, Mr. Gorbachev, didn't make a speech but joined members of the Politburo on top of Lenin's mausoleum. An independent inquiry into claims of ballot rigging in the transport union says there's evidence of serious malpractice at eight union branches, but no plot. The union has already ordered a rerun of its controversial leadership election. The inquiry chairman, Mr. John Garnett of the Industrial Society, today called for tighter voting checks in the new ballot. The union had asked for the inquiry after specific allegations of ballot rigging in their biggest region, the southeast. While the report does clear the regional secretary Sid Stadden and his colleagues of any conspiracy, it does find evidence of what it calls serious electoral malpractice in eight branches. In layman's language, that means one person filled in all the ballot papers for one candidate. Mr Garnett made it clear these eight were only the most obvious examples of rigging. In most, exactly the same sort of cross had been used in exactly the same handwriting. He made it clear there could be more branches ballot rigging, 
But what about the eight? But what I uh, get angry about is that people are going to insult democracy. They should take such little trouble in the way they do it. In a statement tonight, the union's general secretary, Mr. Moss Evans, announced an inquiry into the eight branches, but he pointed out the 3,670 votes involved would not have affected in any way the overall result. Frankly, this report raises as many questions as it answers, but it is the first firm independent evidence that ballot rigging did take place during the last election. And it has to be said that the same branch balloting system that it now appears was open to abuse last time is going to be used in the rerun of the election later this month. Giles Smith, ITN, at the Industrial Society. The government is set to raise more than £360 million from selling off its 48% stake in British Aerospace. The share price for next week's sale was fixed today at 375 pence. British Aerospace used one of its own best-selling products, the Harrier, to get its latest share issue off the ground. £3.75 pence is very close to the price of aerospace shares already traded on the exchange. That's because the city's confident the shares will sell easily. Military aircraft sales are buoyant, and guided weapons systems like the Rapier have a big export potential. But British Aerospace is not like British Telecom. It's a high-risk business, especially the manufacture of commercial airliners, which may take 20 years before they really pay off. As well as its own aircraft, British Aerospace has a 20% stake in the European Airbus, which is still a long way from making any profits. So is this a much bigger risk than British Telecom? Well, I think it's higher risk in that we're not a monopoly, yes, but we're a long-term business, and I believe it's a good business. So it is something that the average investor might be interested in. I think people who understand shares, yes. To prevent British Aerospace falling into foreign hands, the government will retain a single blocking share. As a private company, the city believes aerospace's long-term prospects are good. But there won't be any quick killings. Investors must be prepared to hang on to their shares if they want a decent return. Mark Webster, ITN, British Aerospace. Sections of the army are going private. The government is to hand over to commercial companies some ancillary work, like canteen jobs, formerly done by soldiers. The scheme, called Exercise Lean Look, should boost the army's frontline fighting strength by 4,000 men. At the same time, the government's defence white paper, out today, shows as expected that this year's defence spending will be just over £18 billion, a billion more than last year. The sort of army jobs that could be given to private contractors would be in places like this, a Royal Corps of Transport depot. The army maintains a large number of vehicles and drivers, some of which are only used at peak times. Giving some of this work to private contractors and other support work, such as making false teeth, 800 jobs could be saved. Other methods of improving efficiency in Britain could produce money for 4,000 new soldiers in the front line in Germany, the government report says. The men will help man a new armoured regiment, and they'll also operate the multi-launch rocket system which the army will buy. Another beneficiary will be army aviation, extra ground crews to speed up the refuelling and rearming of anti-tank helicopters will increase the number of attack missions that can be carried out. The Defence White Paper reaffirms the government's commitment to both NATO and out-of-area roles, such as the Falklands and the Persian Gulf. Naval concern over a shortage of orders for new ships will be answered in a few days' time, when the government will invite tenders for three new frigates. In Lebanon, there have been more clashes between Christian and Muslim forces, as thousands of Christians continue to flee the fighting. Muslim troops today shelled a town east of Sidon, where a pro-Israeli militia is defending the Christian stronghold of Jezin. In the past 24 hours, there's been fighting both in Beirut and the hills of southern Lebanon. The ceasefire between Muslim and Christian forces did come into effect this morning. But there were still clashes around the village of Kafar Falus, the last Christian stronghold before the refugee camp of Jezin. In Jezin itself, there are still thousands of Christians trapped by the fighting. Food has been coming through though, some of it from Israel. And many refugees have decided that safety lies only further south behind Israeli lines. By this afternoon there were nearly 20,000 of them in the Israeli controlled area. Some Israeli politicians have said Israel must now intervene behind the Christians. But today Israeli Prime Minister Shimon Peres told me that was out of the question. We shall not move in to get ourselves involved politically or commit militarily. No. Clearly no. We are not going to be the policemen of Lebanon. 
of the policy maker of Lebanon or the military force of one group against another group in Lebanon. Clearly not. Do you feel any sense of responsibility then about what's happening to the Christians? No, sir. Here, the government is clamping down on foreign diplomats who flout parking regulations.